Suppose we want to solve the equation sine of theta equals 0 0.5. Well, you can go to your calculator and get inverse sine of 0 0.5. So on this calculator we press shift, then the sine to bring up inverse sine or arc sine, that's what the A is for. Uh, then we put in 0.5 and the calculator gives us one answer. Now, let's use the unit circle to get another answer. Let's first of all see this value here, 30 degrees. We know that the coordinates of any point on a unit circle are cos theta, sine theta, where theta is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So let's bring theta up to 30 degrees. The coordinates of this point here are cos 30, sine 30. So let's see what these coordinates are. So you can see that the sine of 30 is 0.5, as we already know. Um, the cos of 30 is 0.87. Now, we're not interested in, in the x value of this point, only the y value. So we're interested in points whose y value is plus 0 0.5. Because then we will have an angle whose sine is 0 0.5. So let's get an, another angle whose y val whose sine is 0.5. In other words, we want a point with y value plus 0.5. Actually, it's back here. So here we have it. The y value is 0.5, and we can see that happens for an angle of 150 degrees. So. The coordinates of this point here are cos 150 comma sine 150. So you see there are two angles in the range 0 to 2 pi whose sine is 0 0.5. Of course, if you're not sure, you can just check this by getting the sine of 150 degrees on your calculator. Now there's only two values of theta whose sine is 0.5 as long as theta is between 0 and 360 degrees because there's only two places where the y value of a point on the unit circle is positive. You see the sine of theta is plus 0 0.5 here so we need to look at the quadrants that give positive values for the sine function. Um, in this quadrant all the functions have positive values. That is, sine, is cos, and tan are positive. Whereas in this quadrant, only the sine function is positive. In the other two quadrants, the sine function is negative. So we only have to look to these two quadrants. The calculator will give us the acute angle. That's 30 degrees. That's the angle in this quadrant. And uh, then we just have to draw out this diagram to help get the other angle. So using the cast rule, we draw a rough sketch of our angle in this quadrant, the acute angle solution. And we know that since sine of theta is plus 0.5, we want an angle in this quadrant. So how do we go from this angle in this quadrant here to the corresponding angle in this quadrant here? Well, we just reflect this point through the y-axis. Because by reflecting this point through the y-axis, we see that the y-value is still plus 0.5. Uh, the x-value changes, but we're not interested in the x-value of this point. So you see, by reflecting through the y-axis, we reflect the angle, which was 30 degrees, through the y-axis. And this angle, called the reference angle, enables us to find theta. So we just take 30 from 180 degrees. So that's how we arrive at our second value for theta. Let's take another question. Suppose we want to solve the equation sine of theta equals minus 0.5 for theta between 0 and 360 degrees. Well, if you go to your calculator and get inverse sine of minus 0.5, you get minus 30 degrees. Now what does this mean? 
an angle of minus 30 degrees is measured clockwise from the positive x-axis. So that's the convention. Angles measured anti-clockwise are positive, angles measured clockwise are negative. Now, as I explained before, we consider an angle of minus 30 degrees to be equivalent to an angle of plus 330 degrees. So even though most calculators give an answer of minus 30 degrees, we simply add this number onto 360. Minus 30 plus 360 gives us a positive answer, plus 330. So that's one answer. So we can write down either of these two numbers, it doesn't matter. Um, we're interested in angles whose sine is minus 0.5. So we're interested in points on the unit circle whose y value or y coordinate is minus 0.5. Well, we could use the cast rule. We know that the sine function is negative in the c quadrant, this one here, and also in the t quadrant. It's positive in the two quadrants up here. So, to find a second angle whose sine is minus 0.5, we have to reflect this point here through the y-axis, so we get this point over here. So let's do that. Select this point, select the y-axis. So as you can see, the y value of this point is the same. It's also minus 0.5. So we want an angle um, that gives this point on the unit circle. So the angle is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So it shouldn't be too difficult to find that angle. So we can see what it is here. It's 210 degrees. So to arrive at 210 degrees, we need to reflect the 30 degree angle through the y-axis. So we know that this angle, sometimes called the reference angle, is 30 degrees. And then you can see it's only a matter of adding 180 onto 30 degrees to get 210 degrees. So basically, when you're solving this equation here, we note the sine of this value. The sine is negative. And from that, we look for the quadrants of the unit circle for which the sine function is negative. So those are the C and T quadrants. So we know our angles are in both of these quadrants. So one angle is an angle between 270 and 360 degrees. In this case, it's 330 degrees. Well, you could write down minus 30. And the other angle lies between 180 and 270. In this case, it's 210 degrees.